Last week we talked about the nerves of the foot. Uh, so this week we should talk about the arteries of the foot. With anatomy there's always something to talk about. Um, we should look at the arteries of the leg and briefly where they come from and then we will understand which arteries are going to supply blood to the foot, how they supply blood to the foot and we can look at the really fun things like all the arches and the anastomoses, the links between blood vessels that we see. All right. <laughs> The femoral artery is the major artery of the lower limb and it'll find its way posterior to the knee as the popliteal artery and from there the popliteal artery will give, it will become posterior and anterior tibial arteries. I'm laughing because it's awkward to try to describe how it becomes those things. Um, but we see the posterior tibial artery running down well, the posterior tibia running down the calf, supplying blood to these muscles, whereas the anterior tibial artery will, well, work its way anterior to the tibial into this anterior compartment here and supply the muscles there and run to the foot. So the posterior tibial artery and the anterior tibial artery are gonna do most of the work. There is also a fibula artery, which is kind of hidden away in here, or peroneal artery, which is gonna contribute a little bit. We'll try and look at that. Note how the arteries are not named in the same way as the nerves. Um, we have a tibial nerve, but a posterior tibial artery running together in the calf. We have an anterior tibial artery in the anterior compartment of the leg, but a deep fibular nerve or deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal or superficial fibular nerve will correspond kind of roughly to the, uh, the fibular, nerve, uh, fibular artery. So anterior tibial artery, posterior tibial artery. The posterior tibial artery is gonna supply blood to the sole of the foot. Just like the tibial nerve is gonna innovate structures in the sole of the foot. Here is the medial malleolus, look, there's the big toe, so we're medial. The medial malleolus is this bony lump you can palpate on your tibia. And the posterior tibial artery is gonna run around the medial malleolus. So it's posterior to it and then inferior to it. And we have a number of, so we've got connective tissues tying down the tendons here, uh, retinaculum. And the posterior tibial artery is gonna run around through there so around the medial malleolus to get to the sole of the foot. But as it goes around, it's gonna give off branches to the medial malleolus. It's gonna give off a branch to the body of the, the talus bone, a really, really important bone in the ankle. And then it's gonna to run to the sole of the foot. Different model. Here is the more detailed model of the foot. Uh, but same again, there's the, the great toe. So that's medial, there's the medial malleolus, there's that posterior tibial artery curving around here. So on the big toe, the big toe's got some special muscles. This muscle ab abducts the big toe, so um, abductor hallucis. If we take that off, we can see the path of the tibial artery coming around here and it's giving off this medial calcaneal branch, so an artery that's gonna supply much of the heel, uh, that's an important branch. The bone is the calcaneus there, so hence the calcaneal branch. And then as it runs around to the foot, um, here we have the short flexor of the digits muscle. So if I take that off, that's flexor digitorum brevis we can see the arteries, so you can see which layer they're running in, that's quadratus plantae. So the arteries are running with the nerves deep to that muscle. And we have a medial plantar artery staying on the medial side, running up to the big toe. And we have a lateral plantar branch, which is running across the sole of the foot to the lateral side. And in fact, it's gonna run over to that side, but then it's gonna curve back so we need to look under this layer. So this tendon, this, well this structure here, we see a series of tendons running from the calf. So this is the long flexor of the digit, so flexor hallucis longus. 
And if I take off that layer, the foot's got lots of layers. We can, oh, well, partly, we can start to see that it's coming back around. So it went laterally, and then it starts to curve around medially, but I need to take away this muscle. So this is a muscle that's gonna adduct the great toe, bring it back, so that's adductor hallucis. If I take that off, so you can see that we're now very, very deep in the foot, and there is the plantar arch. It also gets called the deep plantar arch, but there is only one arch. Um, but it gets called the deep plantar arch because it's really deep. And that deep plantar arch is curving around from lateral to medial, really close to the bone now, deep to these other muscles that I've taken off. And it's giving off metatarsal branches. And as those metatarsal branches run towards the digits, they give off digital branches and the digital arteries are going to run up the side of each toe. So each toe has a digital branch on either side of it. So these are the, the plantar metatarsal branches and the plantar digital branches. This point here is probably the most interesting part of the foot in terms of arterial anatomy. We're going to see an artery from the other side of the foot, the dorsal foot, go through the foot and come out here. We'll come back to that later. But can you also see how that dorsal arch as it's arching from lateral to medial, is reconnecting, it's anastomosing with the arteries of the great toe. So if I put this back on, you can see that in fact, that lateral plantar artery becoming the deep plantar arch is anastomosing with the medial plantar artery over here. So we have, wow, this is the theme of the foot and the hand, we have lots of anastomoses. Um, there's the medial plantar artery running across to supply blood to the structures on the, the great toe side of the foot. So if I put those layers back on again, what we saw in terms of the arteries of the sole of the foot was the posterior tibial artery running around the medial malleolus posteriorly to get to the sole of the foot and dividing into medial and lateral plantar arteries and giving off this medial calcaneal branch to the heel and the medial plantar artery is running across towards the great toe, supplying structures as it goes, skin, muscle, bones, joints. The lateral plantar artery is cutting across to the lateral side of the sole of the foot towards the little toe, uh, deep to one layer of muscles there. And then as it curves around, it comes back from lateral to medial and forms the deep plantar arch, the only plantar arch, uh, deep to these muscles here, so quite deep in the foot, and then that gives off the metatarsal branches, which then give off the digital branches. And in fact, it then anastomoses with the medial plantar artery again, so the blood supply to the medial toes is coming from medial and lateral plantar arteries. So that's the shape of things in the sole of the foot. Now the dorsum of the foot. Okay, what have we got on the dorsal foot? All right, so we need to look Deep to the muscles here, these are the muscles of the anterior leg, the muscles of the shin. Um, if I take that muscle block out, we can see this artery here. So this is the anterior tibial artery. We can see it running to the foot. Um, the most notable, I'm losing bottom bits. The most notable point here then is that the anterior tibial artery is running deep to this this retinaculum here that's tying down the tendons, and it's gonna become the dorsalis pedis or dorsalis pedis artery. Dorsal, pedis, foot, the dorsal artery of the foot. And the tendons we've got here, this tendon's running to the big toe, uh, this tendon's running to all the other toes. So this is the, um, we're extending the toes here. So this is the, the long extensor of the big toe, extensor hallucis longus, and the other tendon then is um, extensor digitorum longus. So between those, if you find that tendon uh, and you palpate just a little laterally to this tendon here, between those tendons, you'll find the pulse of the dorsalis pedis artery. Now that artery is gonna run to the web space down here, but at this point, pretty much as it's sat on top of the navicular bone, it's gonna give off this lateral tarsal artery, which is deep to these tendons and muscles here. The other muscle we have here, so this is the short 
extensor of the toes, digitorum extensor, uh, extensor digitorum brevis rather. So the lateral tarsal artery is running across the tarsal bones, the bones of the, the foot here, but it's deep to those muscles. And then a little bit further along, um, the dorsalis pedis artery will give off the arcuate artery, which I can't see on here at all, but that's also arching. Arcuate means curve, right? That's also curving along the dorsum of the foot, just a little bit further along. So that's also curving around here. That arcuate artery is going to anastomose with the lateral tarsal artery. So we get a bit of a bit of a loop there, supplying blood to the tarsal bones and other structures around here. So that arcuate artery is going to form the, the arch on the dorsal side of the foot. And just as we saw on the plantar side, the arcuate artery is going to give off metatarsal branches. And then those metatarsal branches will give off digital branches. So these digital arteries on either side of the toe. So these are dorsal arteries and dorsal digital arteries running along either side of the toe. But we also have plantar digital arteries. So each toe has got a pair of arteries running along either side and kind of on a dorsal side and on a plantar side. So there's a lot of redundancy in blood flow here. But here, here we can see where the dorsalis pedis artery dives between the first metatarsal bone and the second metatarsal bone. So that's where we are. And it dives through the foot to the plantar surface. So if I, if I take those plantar layers off again and we, and we get to the very deep foot, what's happening here is the dorsalis pedis artery on its way to the web space between the first and second toes gives off the deep plantar artery, which passes deep between the first and second metatarsals. And the deep plantar artery emerges on the plantar side of the foot it anastomoses with that lateral plantar artery to form the deep plantar arch of the foot. So the, that deep plantar arch of the foot that we described, this artery in the deep foot, this arch, this curve, I'm over-egging it now, but <laughs> this deep arch is described as being formed by the lateral plantar artery, which has come from the posterior tibial artery, and from the deep plantar artery, which has come from dorsalis pedis, which has come from the anterior tibial artery. So there's a significant anastomosis, a link between the dorsal foot and the posterior foot, between the anterior and posterior tibial arteries through that deep plantar artery, which is kind of neat, right? Some significant redundancy there, which which we see in the peripheries of the body, so that if you have a problem with blood flow through one artery, you have some redundancy. The blood supply isn't completely cut off and you get ischemia and lose all your digits, because your digits are important to survival, right? Okay, finally, I mentioned uh, the fibular artery or peroneal artery, which is a branch of the posterior tibial artery. And we can't see much of it, but we can see a couple of signs. We can see so this is the lateral malleolus, look, there's a little toe there. So this is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. Um, this is, these shapes are formed by bones forming the ankle joint. And we can see, oh, we can see it popping through the interosseous membrane here. We can see a communicating branch with the anterior tibial artery. And we can see um, a branch to the lateral malleolus, but also in here, we can see a lateral calcaneal branch coming out to supply blood to the heel. And in there will be another um, posterior branch to the lateral malleolus. So what we're seeing here on this side, these are, these are signs. These are the, the final branches of that, that fibular artery. So they're supplying this region of the foot and ankle with blood. So those are the arteries of the foot. The key points then are the anterior tibial artery and the posterior tibial artery doing most of the work. The anterior tibial artery running to the dorsum of the foot, giving that lateral 
lateral uh, tarsal branch out here and that arcuate branch forming the curve which those dorsal metatarsal and then dorsal digital branches come from and the key idea, idea being that deep plantar branch from dorsalis pedis diving through the foot to the plantar side where it meets the posterior tibial artery giving off the medial plantar artery and the lateral plantar artery and that lateral plantar artery curving around to meet the, the, the deep plantar artery and forming that deep plantar arch from which the plantar metatarsal arteries come off and the plantar digital arteries come off. So there's a, there are lots of anastomoses, lots of lovely arcades, lots of uh, redundancy in case of trauma or uh, a thrombus blocking blood flow. But in terms of peripheral vascular disease, if all the arteries are affected similarly, then blood flow as a whole will be reduced uh, to the foot. So dorsalis pedis is a useful, uh, useful location, right, for palpating the pulse in this extremity and looking at the, or palpating the quality of the pulse compared to say, the pulse of the popliteal artery and the femoral artery to give you signs of uh, the quality of the blood flow through the, through the foot. So, you know, we're worried about diabetes again. We're worried about foot care and peripheral vascular disease going along with uh, peripheral neuropathies and causing damage to the skin, lesions that build up because poor blood supply means poor repair, poor nervous innovation means it doesn't really hurt, you don't notice it and they get worse, which then results in having to remove parts of the foot to heal those, those lesions, those ulcers. Okay, the arteries of, uh, of the foot. See you next time.